this is Elder. He's bringing firewood for his mother's cooking fire. He's the natural leader of a pack of children who live in a run-down three-story block of flats at the bottom of the main street in the town. The place is a small town in northern Mozambique, Lushinga, capital of the province of Niassa. The year is 1990, towards the end of a destructive civil war, and there's very little to nourish either the minds or bodies of children. But these children make their own entertainment. Give them access to a few basic tools and some wire and see what they can do. And what are they doing? The first job is to straighten out the wire of this old piece of fencing that they found discarded somewhere. They're great scavengers, these children. They're making the different parts of cars and lorries. They seem to carry the plans of them in their heads, like some genetic knowledge they were born with. There have been almost no lorries to be seen in Lishinga for many years, especially articulated ones. They make all the parts separately, securely fastened together with strips of rubber from old car inner tubes. This is the body of a motorcycle being put together. And here is a finished one they're playing with. Somehow they know how to cut the right lengths to make things fit together, what cross pieces are needed to make a construction stable, and how to make wheels with the axle centralised. Chassis, axles, engine casings, bodywork. Then wheels. The wheels are either made from the ends, cut off uh, beer cans, and clamped together to form a strong wheel. <coughs> or made from thick rubber, cut from old car tyres. Here's Zeka getting his wheels on. He handles a hammer like a professional mechanic. A last few adjustments, then time for a road test. Time for everyone to get on the road. Look at the steering mechanism, worked by a steering wheel. It's not like cars actually use, it's a mechanism of its own. Now, how do they know how to do that? Did they think it out? Or have they some inherent deep grammar of mechanics, of physics in their skills? Clever kids. And then a new idea, and a chance for them to learn a bit about electricity. Headlights on their vehicles. They solder wires to flashlight lamp bulbs.
where the wires are connected to torch batteries housed on the top of the lorry driver's cabin. The bulbs are fitted into wire holders backed with silver paper from cigarette packs. Even the motorcycles have lights. And off they go into the night with headlights blowing. These are natural gymnasts. They have no equipment but an ingenious use of an old car tyre to give them a bit of bounce for somersaults. And what joy and pride they have in what they can do. I learned to do this in Mekula. My friend said I must run and bounce on the tyre and do a somersault. I listened to what he said and ran and bounced and did it well. This is the back of the flats where they all live. They've been asked to try and make something useful out of the piles of empty beer cans that are thrown on rubbish heaps everywhere. Water here is scarce and has to be carried long distances on the heads of their mothers. And yet here it is running to waste. The idea is to make pipes out of those old beer cans that could perhaps be used for channeling the water to irrigate a vegetable plot. They like the idea.
they're working hard because they've been promised a few pence, a few metikai per tube, on the supposition that they would make just a metre or two. But they've invented mass production. One group cuts the ends off. Another group smooths the ends by hammering them on a log. And a third group joins the tubes. By the end of the day, they've made about 20 metres of pipes and earned enough to buy them all a good meal. And finally, here's Elder testing out the pipes. Instead of carrying water in cans to irrigate Mother's vegetable plot, maybe the tubes could be stretched along the ground, following the rows of vegetables and watering them that way. Will anyone take up the idea? <laughs> <laughs>